everybody. <laughs> recording this morning. We're glad to have you with us. Um, let me see. Um, uh, please, no, oh, they're gone. Please take note of the, they're there. I can't see them because my back is turned to them. We, we just asked that you would keep your masks on, that there will be music, but um, Mark, bless his heart, we've asked him to lead the singing because there's one person allowed to sing. But we understand that the rest of us are allowed to hum this morning. So loudly, loudly, no, I'm just Soft, softly, less, you know, and 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 prayers and things like that. If there's prayers, I think I have the prayers right. Um, just speak, speak very, very softly. And if you have an offering that you want to leave, we'd ask that you would put it in the basket as you're leaving. Um, I feel like one of these flight attendants, you know, like <laughs> doing this. Um, if you need to use the washroom, the female washroom is being used for both males and females this morning. Um, but we'd ask only one at a time, okay? And there's different cubicles there for you. So, and also to st keep your place unless you have to get up and go out or something like that while, while, while we're worshiping. Anyway, it's great to see you folks. Welcome. It, I, I'd love to, we'd all love to give each other hugs, I'm sure, but we can't this morning, but that time will come, we'll trust. So let's come together in our call to worship. No, oh, it's not printed? Oh, it's me, okay. Um, I thought it was going to be printed, sorry. Christ is risen. You say, Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. God's love is poured out from the world. The crucified one gives a new life within. And the wounds of broken people are healed. For Christ breathes the Holy Spirit upon human hearts. So we thank you, Lord, the Lord of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we're going to sing. We're going to hum. Christ the Lord is risen today. Sorry, we couldn't give out bulletins either because paper is not allowed. <laughs> so you have to follow off this way.
and you just want to burst out with singing. <laughs> I feel so defiant this morning. <laughs> Let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. In awe we come to this Easter morning, Heavenly Father. We cannot understand the full meaning of the resurrection, and we don't understand everything concerning the return of the Lord from the grave. But please give us in this time the courage to accept what we cannot fully understand. Please give us the ability to hear clearly the words of amazement uttered by those first visitors to the tomb that first Easter dawn. And let the light of newness shine on us, that our hearts may rejoice, our spirits soar, and our lips sing your praise, even as did those that first who first experienced the resurrection of the Lord. And we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We celebrate light conquering the darkness. We light the Christ candle aware that the power of the resurrection has forever changed who we are. We are those given the power to become children of the light. Today we celebrate new life, new joy, new possibilities, and new life. The old is dead and finished and the new shines brightly within our midst. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing Joy to the World. But we thought the people could say the words while Mark sings it. Yep. Yeah. How's that, Mark? Okay. Good and high for you, too. tomb while it was still dark 
and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. And so she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They've taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and, and the other disciple, and they were going to the tomb. And the two, the two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he didn't go in. And Simon Peter therefore also came, following him, and, and he entered the tomb. And he beheld the linen wrappings lying there, and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And then entered in therefore the other disciple also, who had first come to the tomb, and, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that Jesus must rise again from the dead. And so the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary Magdalene was standing outside the tomb, weeping. And so as she wept, she stooped and she, she looked into the tomb. And she beheld two angels in white, sitting one at the head and one at the feet, for the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I, I don't know where they've laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around, and behold, Jesus standing there. And beheld Jesus standing there. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came, announcing to the disciples, I've seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. May God add his blessing to his holy word, both now and forevermore. Amen. We're pleased to have Wally to play for us today.
Thank you so much, Wally. It's so great to hear you play again. Am I allowed to have a little bit of light on at this time for my reflections or sure. no? Uh, yeah, I mean, Okay. the more no. light there is, the less that shows up for when we sing. No, for when we put it on for other Why? people at home. Okay, okay. But is that? Go ahead, Alex. Do for light. Okay. <laughs> we'll still have your voice. Right? Okay. Well, we gathered this morning, uh, we're small in number physically, um, much like that first Easter morning when some of Jesus' followers went to the tomb. But we are so great in number, as we remember our brothers and our sisters in various places, who because of this pandemic um, and around the world are celebrating with us in spirit. And so we, we welcome those of you who are here but we welcome those of you beyond the boundaries of this building, and we, it's great to have you as part of our morning worship. It's a morning wherever we are when we want to fill the air with triumphant song. And we're limited here behind our, our masks, but for you elsewhere, well, you can let it rip. <laughs> or to put it more politely, you can sing at full volume, okay? The song, Good Christians All Rejoice and Sing, Now is the Triumph of Our King. And to all the glad world, to all the world glad news we bring. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I suspect that Easter means different things for us at different times. For one thing, yes, from a purely mundane perspective, it can mean chocolate bunnies, and eggs and spring flowers and good food. So I suspect some of you folks have been looking for your chocolate bunnies and Easter eggs this morning. So I hope you found them. Did you find them? Found them? You found them, all right, way to go. Um, but on a higher level, I think it can mean that God is seen as having the final word on evil. History is his story. Jesus' enemies tried to defeat him, um, but they, they just fit into his plan to overcome the power of evil and death. We rejoice this morning because Jesus has won. We see so much going on in our world today that disturbs us. The powers of evil are still trying to usurp Jesus to take his place in power. But as Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. One day we will see Jesus coming in power and great glory. And this is good news for his followers. Evil will finally be done away with for good. Another reason why Jesus may stand out, Easter may stand out for us, is realizing that with trust in Jesus, our sins, our wrongs that we have committed are forgiven when we ask him. They're erased. Some people can tell wonderful stories of great financial debts paid and the relief that they experienced when somebody stepped in and, and, and paid their debts for them. But don't we often even feel a sense of gratitude? You, you know, you're, you're getting coffee and somebody says, I'm paying for it this morning. Don't we feel good about that? We think, thank you, thank you so much. And so can we think of payment made for our moral and spiritual debts? Uh, amazing when we think of what Jesus did. I was preparing these reflections and Norma Regno sent me uh, this anecdote as I was preparing these reflections. The story is about one day a man went to visit a church and he parked, and then a man said to him, hey, that's my spot, you took my place. And then the visitor went to Sunday school and, and sat down, I guess it must have been an adult Sunday school, and a lady from the church came over and said, ah, uh, that, that's my seat, you, you, you took my place. 
And the visitor thought it was rude, but said nothing. And the visitor then went into the sanctuary and sat down. And somebody else came and said, ah, uh, ah, uh, that's my seat. You, you took my place. And later the congregation was praying for Christ to dwell among them. And the stranger stood up. He had horrible scars on his hands and on his sandaled feet. And someone asked, what happened to you? And the stranger's hat became a crown of thorns and a tear fell from his eye and he answered, I took your place. This Easter season and every time we think of Jesus, can we recall with thanks, he took my place. Now Easter may also mean a lot to us because if we accept Jesus' offer to take our place, he has given us eternal life. Death has been defeated. And I apologize, I forgot to say this when we were beginning our service. So this may come to you now as a shock. But yesterday we got the news that Irene Stevens had died yesterday morning. Irene knew she might not come through her cancer surgery, but she was not afraid to die. She knew where she'd be going because she knew whom she believed in. She had great faith in the Jesus of Good Friday and Easter. And Saint Irenaeus wrote, why don't you believe that you will exist again after this life? Is it harder for God, who made your body when it was not, to make it anew when it has been? Doesn't that make a lot of sense? Is it harder for God, who made your body when it was not, to make it anew when it has been? In his book, 100 Meditations on Hope, Wayne Lamb wrote, In the midst of a storm, a little bird was clinging to the limb of a tree, seemingly calm and unafraid. And as the wind tore at the limbs of the tree, the bird continued to lock the storm in, to look the storm in the face as if to say, shake me off, I still have wings. And because of Christ's resurrection, each Christian can look the experience of death in the face and confidently say, shake me off, I still have wings, I'll fly anyway. And then there's another thing I'd like to say about the significance of Easter. And that is the thrill of being included. Do you recall Jesus, first of all, appearing to Mary Magdalene, who stood there crying her heart out because she and those who had gone to the tomb didn't know what had become of Jesus? And the tomb was, the, the tomb was empty. And I think that we would have felt the same way if we had gone to the grave site of a beloved friend and to find the grave open. We would have wondered, what has become of our loved one? Who has taken our loved one's body away? That is what those early disciples were going through, and Mary was. But do you recall that Mary was an outcast woman whom Jesus had delivered from seven demons? And now she was healed by Jesus in her right mind, and she was one of his faithful followers. And the people that, that when we think about the people that Jesus includes as part of his friends, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? How thrilled Mary had to be beyond words to see Jesus alive now. Even more, the first to see him alive. And she said, he said to Mary, Mary, go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Think of it, the King of Kings saying to these vulnerable, ordinary, frightened people, I am returning to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Do you catch the inclusion there? 
Aren't there so many people today feeling excluded for one reason or another? We've all likely felt it to some extent as children going to school, whether we're teased or left out of things, and told that we were stupid or dumb or whatever. Maybe we felt left out. Or maybe we felt out because we're on a different social level. I was telling Craig the other day, I used to kind of keep it quiet when I was at university that I was from a farm because I felt that city people probably looked down on farm people. So I tried to keep that quiet for a while. Or maybe you're from a different country, or a different, we have a different health issue. Maybe we're missing a limb, maybe we have a limp, maybe we have a cough, maybe there's something wrong with us physically, and we feel excluded, cut off from other people. But Jesus includes us in his family. Isn't that marvelous? We can be included in his family, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords family. Isn't that awesome? You probably have noticed when you came in, there's tables at the back, tables and tables of covered material there. And it's mostly the donation of a, a dear lady who had a craft store that's now closed. And she thought that we could use the, the material as a fundraiser. But with the pandemic, we're, we're having trouble making it available to people. But I thought of those materials in terms of people. Do we not brush over people sometimes and think they're of no use to us? They're, they're just kind of in the way. They're taking up space. We take people for granted, don't we, sometimes? We just don't have time for them. And um, I was thinking of that. You see stuff, you think, ah, what? It's just taking up space. Just taking up space. Just taking up space. But what does Jesus see? What does Jesus see? He looks at people and he sees value in them. Wood that can be transformed into a beautiful message. Be still and know that I am God. Material that can have things written in. This was from Judy Friga. He will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in him, whose thoughts turn off into the Lord have these in our kitchen. Another one, ordinary piece of wood, it can be transformed into something. And doesn't Jesus see each of us like that? He can take us as being an unfinished product and with the blessing of his love and fellowship, he can take and transform them into something beautiful. He can take us and transform us into something beautiful. And don't we all want to be that way? And that is what Jesus does through his mercy, through his care, through his forgiveness, through his love. It's Easter morning. And we all have reasons to celebrate for different reasons. And hopefully they're all for these reasons. That we can celebrate that he's alive. The tomb is empty. We can have our sins forgiven. We can go on again, and he can take us and transform us into the beautiful people that he sees in each of us because we we're created in God's image. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing, The Strife is Over. Thank you. 
glad to have you here to lead the singing this morning. Thank you so very, very much. <laughs> there you go. Um, again, I, I apologize. I forgot to, to give some of the announcements before uh, the service started. That's usually what Les does. Um, but um, there are some people um, celebrating birthdays. Um, Patricia Nielsen's birthday is today, so if you're talking to her, please wish Pat a happy birthday. If you're watching this, Pat, happy birthday. Les Spurl on April the 6th, so happy birthday, Les. Uh, Rupert Richardson and um, Pastor jean -Le Beauf. We, we love Pastor jean -Le Beauf, so um, uh, Rupert and Pastor jean -Le Beauf are celebrating their birthday on April the 9th. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Irene slipped away into glory yesterday morning. Uh, Bert Grindley, I spoke with his wife Margaret yesterday. Bert was, he was still living yesterday, but he is in palliative care in Cornwall. Uh, I think it's dementia. It's just, it's just dementia. So I haven't heard anything more. Ron, Pastor uh, Reverend Ron Mahabir, he's continued to get stronger at the Anna Berge. And William McLean has been moved to the Chateau Romanoff Seniors Residence in Valleyfield. Um, William uh, has got Parkinson's, so, so I think he's just not able to live by himself anymore. So uh, I've seen the, the Chateau Romanoff on uh, YouTube, and it looks like it's a beautiful place. And then we're hoping to have our annual meeting next Sunday uh, following the service. So I know there will be people that will not feel able to come, uh, but uh, we're trusting uh, Elizabeth Bergeron to prepare it so that we can have a meeting here and still have Zoom people coming in somehow or other. So that's, that's what we're hoping to do. So we didn't have our annual meeting last year, so um, hopefully the meeting will not be that long, but it still needs to be done. So they're expecting things from us. Okay. Let us come together in prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for these springtime days when all the earth preaches a glad Easter gospel. And as the great stone was rolled away from Christ's tomb, cold winter has been getting pushed aside by the angel of spring and, and we're beholding a resurrection. We'll soon see crocuses and daffodils and tulips break forth from the earth, and buds and blossoms burst on limbs of shrubs and trees, and the sad, dark soil becomes flushed with color as grasses awaken to the sun's tender touch. All that seemed dead becomes alive. And so today we also thank you for Easter's reminder of Christ's victory over death. We praise you. And now we know that if the gospel, Easter gospel, is true, the seal on the tomb is broken forever, and ours, and on his tomb and ours, and death has lost its power to destroy our hope and joy. And so may we remember that after Calvary, Jesus showed himself alive only to those who truly loved him. And only by loving him can we ever know the power of his resurrection. And so let us gladly claim his resurrection, that his presence may companion all our days, that his example may be the living center of all our thinking and acting, and his love may govern our behavior toward all your children. For our beloved dead who live with you, we thank you. And when we remember Easter, we cannot weep in bitter anguish because a loved one's of the gut beside a loved one's grave. For Easter truth mixes gladness with sorrow. We thank you for the better life dear ones inherit, for the fuller wisdom they now know, for the greater joys and broader fellowships they experience that they are now nearer to you than ties of earth ever allow. For faith that triumphs over grief, for trust in you that illumines loneliness and makes rainbows for our tears, we praise you. 
We thank you, Lord, for the change that Easter hope makes in all our days. And through Easter, we see that even the most awful tragedy like Calvary is made by you into ultimate triumph. Through Easter, we know that Earth's temporary victories, like the Roman nails, are final defeats, and Earth's seeming defeats are often your mighty victories. And so, O oh Lord, our Father, let us look at all of life in the clear light of Easter day, valuing highly those things that death cannot corrode or, or snatch from us. And may this full circle of our days have its center in you and be perfected by holding to your purpose for us, as was so of Jesus, who came from you and returned to you. And thus may the truth, the beauty, and the goodness of Easter touch all our tomorrows, and may we live all our days in the glory of that morning. We pray in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We see now um, just a second. Thine is the <laughs> thank you, Mary. Thine is the glory. And then we're going to have the benediction. And that, after we have the benediction, um, we're going to sing the chorus, Alive, Alive, Alive Forevermore. But the other day as I was typing it in, I made a typing error. And I looked down and I had written, Alice, Alive, Alive Forevermore. And I thought, how appropriate. It spoke to me. So when we go to sing that chorus, put your name in there, okay? Sandra, Richard, um, Jude, Jessica. <laughs> I'm not going to go all the names. But put your name in. Alive, alive forevermore. I'll speak to you, okay? Thine is the glory.
transforming love of God. God is not really things as they are, but God all things are made new. All creation responds to God's presence. The world is alive with possibility. Nothing is beyond the reach of God, neither evil, nor hardship, nor death. Christ is, is risen, Christ he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. So you're allowed to you want to and move in your little space. Move in your little space and clap to the top. By email, yes, by email, yes. So if you could just um, physically distance, let yourself out that door, that would be greatly appreciated. And I don't know, maybe from a distance across the parking lot, you could talk to each other, I don't know, but. Great to see you, so glad you came, God bless you.